Prophecy. No, not prophecy. That was in China. That was from Canada. Oh, what? Well, it was Well, the prophecy conference was a bit of a nightmare for me. It was, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. It was the last big, it was the, the climax, if you will, the whole of that. We waited for that. We had two weeks to read the book and all came together. And uh, Harry Potter Educational Panel said, you know, John, you didn't talk on alchemy in the last book and the Christian content in the last book. I was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had 30 threads going on with Professor.com trying to digest the last book. Was, was, you know, Debbie Hallows was the fastest selling book in history. All right. And of the series, uh, Broke All Records, a uh, uh, book that we attacked, John. Shh. He's killed her way This book was, a, was such a monster. Uh, we waited so many years for this book. We found out, obviously, the reward at the end. We found out that Rowan was, was right, that, that she was telling the truth, at least, that uh, the last third of the book drove the previous six and a half books, that uh, everything comes down to the last thing. So unwinding that was a lot of work. And fans from all over the country and the world were being a college professor and going through 30 threads talking about all this. I get to the prophecy, I was talking to friends up front here about this, and I hadn't delivered the lectures to um, I read the book maybe twice, two and a half times, and gone back and the just those the references for the threads and such. Um, and pulled together these two talks. Uh, then rewrote them, and now they're in the book. And you have to buy so that so my daughter Sarah can leave her school back there. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, tonight's talk. Tonight's talk. I've given this talk at uh, a few conventions. Here is at LeakCon at uh, Ascatrast, and people really like it. So much so that when John asked me to go to speak after I did get a bit of a I gave him a, a menu of options of things I wanted to talk about. I really wanted to talk about the structure of the books. I think I've actually broken the code on how the books are structured in terms of a ring, a ring structure. Uh, I was all excited about that. John said, no, 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 we want the eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, we're going to do eyeballs. It's, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite talks that I hope this week. All right. Welcome. So we waited just for you to come. <laughs> First of all, do you like this building in this room? Is this the John? <laughs> uh, the most awkward like, platform I've been on. <laughs> uh, what, what do I do here? What, what is, what is you know, John Granger, Potter Pundit, do for you know, fun here? They're very Potter. My job is, is not. Uh, People think I make things up. I, I, I look at the books and think, well, here's what I think the books are really about. And I kind of you know, drop acid or something and say, this is what the books really mean. Uh, oh, that's, oh, that's, uh, that's, that's not what I do. I, I try to enter into the book myself, uh, just like every other reader does, and experience it, really you know, have the effect of the book. And then go back and start to say, how does she create this event? A little bit like riding a roller coaster. And then going back and saying, why was why did I wet myself right there? <laughs> what did they do to make that happen like that? Um, and to do that in a book means you have to understand the artistry, the meaning, the tradition that in which the author is writing so that you can share that other people have that experience. And then you go back in and you explain it again, more sensitive to what the author is doing. And so you have a lot more aha. A little bit, a little bit like a Hogwarts prefect, if you will. Some of these people back there today said Percy. By the way, Percy. That's bad. I mean, what was that for all Just like the first years when they come, they, they leave the, the sorting ceremony, they follow their prefect back to the dormitory and the piece of Hogwarts for Hogwarts for. The door, they have to meet the big lady and they have to say the magic The trick here is to find the right painting that will open up this book, Deathly Hallows, and the right word uh, that will really open up so we get the inside of the Harry House. That's my, that's my ambition tonight, is to find the right painting and share the password with you to open up Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows. I challenge you to think about how you think about seeing, reading, and thinking. And then suggests 
that Harry's greatest adventure slash book has something important, something important to teach us about what it means to be human, how we how we know things. Uh, this is, let's see if I can learn anything. That's, that's a lot of like, small talk. Uh, how many of you have read C.S. Lewis's Boys and Dogs? Okay, there's a you raise your hand because I've read that to you. <laughs>
Why put this up in your head? Why do I think it's not real? And you turn the page immediately to find out what happened with Harry and the Dark Lord, right? And you didn't say, wow, that was it. Close the book. <laughs> that was the moment for me. Uh, so we've got we to unpack this as to how this is the key. Dumbledore's statement in the form of a question, why on earth should that mean it is not real? This vignette is something like the door to the Ravenclaw comic book. We need to answer Dumbledore's question to understand the meaning beneath and behind the service scenario. This is our point of it. So we've got the painting. What we need now is the word, right? You've got to take the pair. You've got to know the word. It's got to be something to get you behind this painting. We're standing in front of the right scene. It's Harry, robed, barely robed, and, if, and, and the dry ice is rising, and he says, wait, one more thing. He asks this question, then we're using the answer. That's what we want to do. But how do we get inside that pain? Now, uh, there's, a, there's a few surreal moments in Deathly Hallows that are uh, Dickensian and being absurd. You know, like the scene when all the, the, uh, four witches and you know, was it three wizards arrive at a, no, it's two wizards and a goblin arrive at the side of a riverbank that just happened to be camping, and they overhear a conversation. Wait a there's fantasy and then there's just absurd. Uh, but one of the things that is most was to me was the most bizarre was Ron with his wand in front of a magical radio. Okay. <laughs> and he has to at the right moment when they started broadcasting say the right word, not knowing the word or the moment. And yet Ron is still not, Ron is not the sharpest knife in the world. <laughs> I'm still thinking that this. This, this, this has got so little chance of payoff that this is like, he does. He continues to do this, and of course, he does say the right word, and he gets to hear the, the Potter cast. Right? What is the magical word? Right? Albus. 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 Now, we all, we all, we read it, Michael Albus. It's, uh, I remember it's the Dumbledore, and that's why he thought of that. So. Well, if you know the alchemy of the Sears, <laughs> uh, the, the stage is about here black, white, and red. Alice is the, the uh, Latin word for white, glorious, or splendid. And he says white when they're in the white part of the book. It's, it's just after the Silver Doe scene. And it, it, the Silver Doe is really the, the advent of the white. We had the Negretto, where Harry has denied Dumbledore. Uh, you know, and, and then we immediately go to the Silver Doe with the white the snow and water. Uh, the baptism by Ron the Baptist there um, in, in the scene where he makes me laugh. It's a tough one. I just totally lost my train of thought. This is, this is live, right? So you're going to cut all this out. Uh, I'll fix it in post. Um, <laughs> Ron is in the white part of the novel, and Rowan has a little joke, has Ron say white, and that causes Potter cast to come on. So if you were an alchemist, you went, oh, <laughs> <laughs> even off on anyway. <laughs> we're at a point where we're looking at this scene of Harry and Alice Dumbledore talking to King's Cross, and we're thinking, what, what is in this book that so permeates the book that might be the magic word that will open up this scene. I, I suggest to you that the word you want to say in front of the scene of Harry talking to Dumbledore is eyeballs. Uh, now, if you're like me, you first read the book, you didn't close it saying, wow, there are a whole bunch of eyeballs inside the book. Uh, I didn't realize this until I was writing something on the uh, symbolism of the triangular eye the actual Deathly Hallows symbol, which Roland calls the triangular eye three times. And I was breaking down, Roland actually, I'll talk about this in a while, Roland actually shows, she has four different levels of interpretation of this symbol inside her book. So she's giving you a model on how to read a text with the symbol which is inside her own book.